So we think of hair color and eye color and height and whether or not you have freckles or curly hair or a widow's peak. These are all traits or characteristics that we know we inherit from our parents. And so you may have the same eye color as both your parents or you may have the same eye color as only one parent or your eye color may be different than either parent. And all of these um, are explained by genetics and different inheritance patterns and today we're going to specify or talk specifically about one called Mendelian genetics. And it's named Mendelian genetics from this man pictured here called his name is Gregor Mendel and he was actually a monk and a scientist and a teacher who lived in a monastery back in the 1800s. Today we refer to him as the father of genetics because of the, the amount of work that he did and the ideas that he came forth with. Um, but during his lifetime he actually died and wasn't recognized at the time for any of his work. Now you see to the right uh, the common name for this would be a pea plant and you see that it, it's in two forms. We have a white flowering pea plant and a purple flowering or violet flowering pea plant and these were what Mendel used as what we call his model system. So these were what he used to study characteristics that are inherited. He was very interested in how traits or characteristics are passed on from parents to offspring. And so he used the pea plant but, but these are a model system meaning that you can apply these concepts or thoughts to other organisms also not just the pea plant. And if you recall from way earlier in the semester we see the scientific name for this pea plant is Pisum sativum and so the genus then the first word is capitalized and the specific epithet is not and, and that's, it's italicized. Let's, let's talk a little bit about how a pea plant is fertilized or pollinated and then what is the product of that. So in this figure we have one flowering pea plant and as you can see each plant has both the male and the female components that are present so that it can self pollinate or self fertilize and essentially serve as both the male and the female part of the reproduction. You can also cross pollinate two different plants and take the male component from one and the female component for another. The product or the fruit of, of a pollination or reproduction is a pea pod. And if you open up the pea pods, you've probably all had green peas, may not be your favorite food, but inside there's multiple individual peas or seeds, and each one of these is an offspring. So that each of these can be planted and can become a full grown pea plant. And that is why when it was Mendel's turn to cook at the monastery, they said, oh no, not pea soup again. <laughs> True breeding plants are what Mendel referred to as those that always produce offspring that look like the parents. So for example, if we're, if we're talking about flower color, a white flowered true breeding plant will always produce offspring with white flowers. And it would be the opposite for a purple flowering true breeding plant. A couple of terms we want to be familiar with. The first is the P generation. That one just stands for parent. So these are those that are serving as parents in the initial cross. So this could be either two parents that are um, both or cross pollinating with two parents or a self pollination where you have one flower or one plant serving as both parents. The F1 generation stands for first filial and filial is just a Latin term that means son or daughter. So essentially this is the, the first generation from the parents cross. And the F2 is the second generation. So that means that if you take one of the organisms from the F1 generation and you allow it to self pollinate, the product of that would be the F2 generation. So again, the second filial generation. Now you, you don't have the, I haven't given you the information to answer this question yet. I just want to see your thoughts and for you to think about what you would, what would be your best educated guess at this point. So we've talked about true breeding plants. White ones always produce white offspring. True breeding purple flowered plants always produce purple flowered offspring. 
What would you expect if you cross a purple flowered true breeding plant with a white flowered true breeding plant? Would you expect about half and half on the offspring, half purple, half white? Would you expect all purple? Would you expect all white? Or would you expect all of them to be the same color and it's some kind of combination in between purple and white, like possibly a light purple or a lilac? So think about that, make your choice. What Mendel observed when he did just this, when he crossed a true breeding purple or violet flowered plant with a true breeding white flowered plant, he saw that all the offspring, 100% of them in the F1 generation were purple. So his question was, why is it that essentially the white flowers are lost or not present in that next generation? Well, we also want to point out that this is what we would refer to as a hybrid. When you cross two different plants, parents with two different characteristics or traits, then you have a hybrid as your offspring. Now he went further after the F1 generation and he allowed this F1 generation to self-pollinate, which produced the F2 generation. And in the F2 generation, he observed that he actually saw both flower colors again. He saw purple or violet flowers, and he saw white. And he, he did this for many, many repetitions. And he found that there was always a ratio of about three to one, with three purple to every one white. And one thing I didn't mention is that when Mendel published or reported his work in about 1865, he had pollinated and grown over 30,000 pea plants to collect all of the data that is the foundation for our genetics today. He also, because he was such a good scientist, he did what's called a reciprocal cross. He wanted to make sure that, it, that the sex of the plant didn't influence the characteristic. For example, did it matter if the violet flowered plant was the male or the female? So the first time through, he, he chose the violet flowered plant to be the male portion and the white flowered plant to be the female portion. And then the next time, he, he did the reverse. The violet flowered plant was the female parent and the white flowered plant was the male parent. And he observed that in both cases, he still had all F1 generation purple and he still got the three to one ratio in the F2 generation. So at this point, He's making some observations and he's trying to understand why that one trait, the white flowering trait, would disappear in the F1 and then would return in the F2 generation. And flower color isn't the only trait that Mendel observed. There were actually seven different pea plant characteristics that he, that he looked at. Some had to do with the seed, shape and color. Some had to do with the pod and some the, the flower or stem of the plant. Now the, the key thing to note about these seven characteristics is that essentially they come in two varieties, right? They come in two choices for each of these characteristics, round or wrinkled, yellow or green, purple or white, no, not, not more than two possibilities. His determination was that some of these traits were in, were, were called dominant traits, and some of them he called recessive traits. And by dominant, what he meant was this particular trait had the ability to mask the recessive form of the trait. And therefore, the recessive form was able to be masked by the dominant form. So that if the dominant form was present, you would not see the recessive form of the trait because it would be covered or masked by the dominant form. So this explained how the white flowering plant could completely disappear in the F1 generation because the purple flowering trait was actually dominant to the white flowering trait. Now as we move forward in the chapter, you'll see that we represent the dominant traits with capital letter and we represent the recessive trait with the same letter but the lowercase form of the letter. So in our flower color, capital P would be for purple flowers, the dominant trait. And in the recessive, 
we would use the lowercase p for the white flowering trait or characteristic. The other determination he made is that he said each plant must have two copies of this trait, one copy that they receive from each parent. Therefore, there's three possibilities for flower color. A plant can have both of the dominant copies, big P, big P, and therefore it will be a purple flowered plant. The plant can have one dominant and one recessive trait, copy of the trait and still be a purple flowered plant because the dominant allele or the dominant trait is going to mask right the, the recessive or the white trait. Or both copies can be the recessive trait and in this case, this is the only way to see a white flowering plant or one that has the recessive type trait. So we're going to stop here and the next video will take you into further into genetics and talk about Punnett squares and genotype and phenotype.